Hey guys, welcome to Hope at Home. We're super excited that you guys are able to join us tonight for Wednesday night service. All right, we are going to have an awesome time together worshiping the Lord. But before we get started, I just want to invite you guys. We are in person on Sundays at 9 a.m. And we are also in person for our Spanish service, Esperanza, at 6 p.m. So join us in person. We're outside. We're social distancing. And we just want to be together. Amen. The Bible says don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And so we're able to join we're able to be together in person, so join us on Sundays. And then if you're not able to join us, we're streaming our services just like we're streaming tonight. We're serving, streaming our services online at 9 a.m. We restream at 11 a.m. and we also stream Esperanza. So make sure you guys are checking it out and, and staying engaged and also rewatch it. Even if you come in person, rewatch them. They're on Facebook, they're on YouTube. So that way you can hear it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So re-listen to them. And then I want to talk about giving really quick. There are a couple ways that we give at Hope. You can give in person on Sunday mornings. If you're not able to join us in person, you can drop your tie through the mail slot at the office door anytime during the week. You can also give on our website, discoverhope.us slash give. It's on the screen. And you can also text to give by following the instructions. You text the number and then just walk through the instructions and it, you can you can give. Amen. And then also you can give through PayPal. So as you're checking out, there's an option through PayPal. So you can give to Hope that way as well. So those are the ways to give. And we are going to go to the Hope. And before we do, we have Pastor Paul bringing the word tonight. So it's going to be awesome. So get excited. It's going to be great, but let's turn it over to the Hope Band and let's worship the Lord together. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to circle back to what Pastor Drew encouraged us with on Sunday. He said that if we enter into his gates with praise and thanksgiving, we are setting ourselves up for an amazing service because we have our hearts already in the right place. Amen. I want to encourage you guys today that if you weren't able to do that today, that we have more opportunities. And I want to just uh, continue with the spirit of, of worship on Sunday, inviting the Holy Spirit to move amongst us, amongst us. Amen. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to move among us. We know that you have filled us and we know that you want to do some things in our lives. I pray, Father, that we are open and willing to receive from you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. To hear you calling 
Our hearts respond to your spirit falling. With eyes to see and ears to hear you calling. Our hearts respond to your spirit falling. Come on, let's sing it out one more time.
You are so amazing. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity we have to daily draw closer to you. We thank you, Lord God, that we are more on fire today than we were yesterday, that there's such a pressing into you like never before in our lives, Lord God. We, we choose right now to cast off any weights or, or sins that so, can, so easily beset us and we choose to run the race that you set before us with all endurance we thank you lord god that we are a people that are wholeheartedly about your business that we are on fire for you we thank you lord god that we follow your leading in every area of our lives that we're led according to the spirit we thank you lord god that we are a dependent on you that we we don't say anything that we don't hear you saying we don't do anything that we don't see you doing we thank you lord god that we are totally dependent on on you and on your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that we are more hungry for you. We thank you, Lord God, for even right now, you just stirring up more of a hunger for you. We thank you that we hunger and thirst for righteousness. We thank you, Lord God, that we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and everything else is added unto us. I thank you, Lord God, that we are just more passionate about you than ever before in our lives. We, we thank you, Lord God. Right now, we just we, we repent of times where we haven't been as focused on you as we should be. We just we just repent and, and right now we, we focus ourselves back on you because you are our desire. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the, the desire of our hearts. And we thank you, Lord God, that nothing is more important than you. And we thank you, Lord God, for being uh, such an amazing God to us. We thank you, Lord God, for our families. We thank you, Lord God, for our church. We, we recognize how blessed we are. And we thank you, Lord God, that we don't take you for granted. We don't take the Holy Spirit for granted, but we are a thankful people. And we thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing in our lives and at this church. We thank you for it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen, guys. So, um, Mr. Carlos is going to come up and do This is My Bible, and I heard he's got a joke for you, too. <laughs> All right, come on up here, brother. Amen, amen. Good evening, Hope Community Church. I want to welcome everybody that's here and everybody that's at home. Make yourselves comfortable. Get yourself some coffee, some tea, whatever. And, you know, I just love this song. There's no place I'd rather be than here than hearing your love, man. Because have you ever been in a place where you didn't want to be, but you're there? But, hey, you know what? It's beautiful when you're here in the presence of God. Because God's love is unconditional. It's the agape love. Unconditional, that's what it means. Agape, the unconditional love of God. He loves us no matter what. And that's what I love about God. You know, because sometimes it's hard. It's hard for people to love me sometimes. I'm hard to, to you know, to love. So, you know what I mean? And sometimes it's hard to love others, but God, but God loves everybody unconditionally and the same. Amen? Amen. Hey, I got a joke for you guys, okay? Okay, this is, what did the left eye tell the right eye? What did the left eye tell the right eye? He said, Be, the left eye told the right eye, between me and you, something smells. You get it? The left eye tells the right eye, between me and you? Something smells our nose because we, we smell with our nose. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, my granddaughter told me that one. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay, if you guys have your Bibles, get them out. Amen. This is a sword, the sword of God. Put it over your head and say, This is my Bible. I could have what it says I could have. I can do what it says I could do. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm ready to receive. The infallible word of God, and having received the word of God, I will do the word of God. Amen. Okay, Pastor Paul's giving the word. Amen. Amen, Pastor Paul. Welcome, and here it is, Pastor. Thank you, brother. You're welcoming me, man. Carlos, I remember the first time I met Carlos. I, I, I mean, everything, nothing looked the way it does right now in the church because Pastor Drew and Tamara always have vision and they always want to make things like this construction stuff in here right now because good things are happening. But anyway, Carlos was over there. Do you remember that day? And he was painting doors, painting offices over there. 
and they're a part of Pastor Junior said, this is Carlos. And I said, what's up, Carlos? And I had this feeling we'd be long friends for a long time. Amen. What's up, everybody? Um, I just want to uh, encourage everybody, like the worship team, you guys really brought it and you helped us to enter in. Um, and I wanted, I was thinking about that. You know, we go from like worship to other segments, you know, even announcements and offering. Um, everything's on purpose and everything's intentional. And I, I, I kind of imagined it. Well, I mean, I've done that, you know, I've been in many services, obviously, um, where uh, sometimes I sit and, and then I'm, and it's good to be in receiving mode, but there's something about praise and worship where we're like physically moving, our, um, our mouths are moving, and um, we're giving and receiving from the Lord. And um, I just want to encourage everybody. First of all, it's good to see the people who are here. Um, it almost feels like church up in here. That's pretty, pretty exciting. Isn't that exciting? Church is exciting. You love church? Hey, Amen. Church is amazing. Just feels good to be here every time I come. Um, so it's good to have everybody here. But whether you're at home or whether you're here or wherever, or if you're watching later, you know, on YouTube or, um, you know, Facebook Live archives, whatever it happens to be, or if whatever, Carlos is taking a video of me right now and he sends it to whoever watches that video right there, uh, whatever it happens to be, be involved. You know what I mean? And, and I know you don't need to hear that. I mean, you, you are already going to do that, but sometimes even the choir needs some preaching. Amen. We need to be encouraged. Be, be involved in what, um, what the Lord has. You know, I love what the encouragement at the end there, that how, how hungry we are, how much passion we have to not only, um, you know, to receive from the Lord and to give to the Lord. And I wasn't sure if my phone was on or not. Silence. All right. Oh, let's pray. Father, you are so good. And we receive from you tonight. Um, and we receive because ultimately we want to give you glory. Um, but freely we do receive and freely we give. Um, man, we want to give you glory tonight by um, walking in the light. Lord, show us, um, show us what you have for us. Um, help give us hearts to receive uh, all, even the hidden things, maybe even something that's uncomfortable or painful that needs to be given to you. Maybe there's something that, like they use that term skeletons in the closet. Maybe there's something that needs to come out tonight in somebody's life. I don't know every reason only you do that you chose this um, topic tonight, but I do know that the topic has benefited my life so much, so much. And uh, we ask that others, I, I just, I want it for other people. And so I pray that right now in the name of Jesus. Speak through me. Speak your message, Father. Speak for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So um, the title of tonight, um, I don't always have like titles. It was funny back when, you know, back in the day in Sozo, um, uh, you know, there would be like, I'd, I'd always like, give a title or I wouldn't always give a title to like the sound people. And we used to have CDs that we'd make of the messages or we'd, you know, then maybe it evolved to like putting it on the website or something. And, and I would tell people, you know, Cliff Billington Jr., you know, if he's watching right now, he'd be like, oh, remember that. You know, I would just, he'd say, what's the title, Pastor Paul? And I'd say, what do you think the title should be? You know what I mean? Because I literally, because I had no idea, because maybe because I went all over the place. Tonight's not like that. Tonight has a top, a title, because it came straight from the Lord. You know what I mean? Amen. What does that say about the other things? No, I'm kidding. Um, no, five, about five in the morning. Probably Brian and Tony were having a Bible study, you know, on the, in the beaches of Ensenada at this time. But I was just waking up. Actually, I wasn't just waking up. God woke me up. And he said the words, in the light. In the light. So um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty deep subject. You know, it can be deep. Um, that's why I want you to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Uh, we're going to have some fun with it. Um, but we also, you know, ultimately having fun is for the ultimate fun is to spend eternity with Jesus in ultimate light. He dwells in unapproachable light. You guys know that, right? 
and just imagine, like the song says, I can only imagine what it's going to be like. So, like, I, like the, I love the term that Pastor Tamron uses. We want to be throne room ready. Who wants to be throne room ready? Amen. Amen. I want to be throne room ready. And, um, and I, I feel like there's some things on my heart and I, that may be the reason that God gave that title for, for, for tonight um, because of some of the things that I've learned and experienced about uh, being in the light. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, was, uh, I sent a, a Marco Polo out to my, some family members. Um, it was my mom and my dad, uh, and I was about nine or ten, and my sister you know, was three years older. So we were in, like, Big Sur. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Big Sur, but it's a really cool place. It's like this. You can camp, um, but it's also, like, on the beach, too. It's like a really cool combo up the coast of California. And um, we were camping, and we were there. And we went, we, we had our, we already had, we're establishing our campground and everything. And then we went to this campfire as a family. And we, get, we left the campfire and we were, and then we wanted to get back to the motorhome, right? The Dreamer. It was called the Dreamer. I think that was our motorhome at the time. And, um, and so we, we started walking back. And there was this woman there at the campfire or in the area and said, hey, I can bring you back to, you know, where you want to go to your campground. And my dad, you know, head of the house, he's like, oh, whoa, okay, uh, yeah, lead us. And le-. But there was only one problem. She was inebriated, right? That means she, was, she had drunk a little bit too much alcohol. And so I don't know <laughs> why, you know, I don't know. My dad was like telling me the story today. And, uh, and I, I had a memory of it for sure, but I, I kind of wanted to, you know, get the adult version. But anyway, she was inebriated, but she was super confident, super confident that she can get us, never met us before a day in our lives, but she was super confident that we could get, she could get us back to our campgrounds. And, um, <laughs> and my experience as the youngest in that group was like, kind of like fear, you know, kind of like, where are we going, mom and dad, you know, and... Um, probably my, my uh, golden retriever, Teddy, was with us, and uh, he went everywhere with us. And so we start walking, and we're following this woman who's had too much to drink in the dark. Everyone say, in the dark. In the dark. Super, super darky, okay? Like, they don't have street lights in a campground at Big Sur. And we're walking, and it's one of those things like you've probably seen in, the, in, the, in a TV show or whatever. After a little while, we pass the same monument, the same tree, the same, you know, rock that we did 20 minutes before. And so, anyway, it was, I remember being, like, so scared. Cause, well, I think my mom was, was scared, and she was, you know, she was like, Bill, I think we should just go on our own and find this. I think she's drunk, you know. So it was just, anyway, it was just a moment. That reminded me of, you know, kind of what the Bible says, right? Like if two, if, you, if the blind leads the blind, then both will fall into a ditch, right? And thank God we did not fall into a ditch. Um, I want to read from, uh, if you guys can put up First John um, 1, starting in verse 5. Um, let's read a really good portion of scripture um, that comes from, or uh, that has to do with this topic. Amen. All right. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That's super cool. No darkness in him. Next verse. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light, come on, has anybody had the DC Talk song in their head when I say this verse? I want to be in the light as he is in the light. No, look it up. It's on Apple Music. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, right now, right now, look it up. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Can you keep that on the, on the screen? I always wondered why it talked about, like, fellowship with one another. I always wondered why it talks about my relationship to people around me when it always seemed to me as a Christian that it was only me and God, you know what I mean? That, that, that was a lot of what I, what I believed in. It was a lot like, who else, why does it matter to anybody else? My stuff, 
my dirt, my darkness, what I've done, and you know, whatever, to somebody else. It, that never really, I never was taught that. It never really made a lot of sense. But I think you'll kind of see the connection and let the Holy Spirit reveal the connection as we continue to go through, um, you know, what I have on my heart. Because um, my, my one point, I think I have one point, right? I, like, yeah. Uh, and it's called, and the, that point is, dun, 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 walk in the light. No, I'm, no, it's, no, it's not. No, it's not. In the light, I am seen and known. In the light, I am seen and known. Oh, it is better than walk in the light. In the light, I am seen and known. Mm, 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 mm. Scrumptious, diddly umptious, right, Tony? When you, when, when I, mm, this is good stuff. To be seen and known. It's good. Okay. So, in the light. Well, oh, oh, I know what I was going to do. Um, all right. In, is, that, is somebody like monitoring the chat like on Facebook Live or, or uh, the people that are at home? No, sure, okay. If they're not, then please do. All right, or you guys can shout out here. There's a lot of cool, really smart people in this room. Um, what is something that you would not want to do in the dark? Walk in the dark, especially when there's furniture, right? Like, what? Are, just think about that right now. Uh, throw it in the chat if you want. I would love to hear some answers. Joaquin, you are, I, I, for some reason, as I thought about asking that question, your face with that awesome handlebar, handlebar butt mustache came to my mind. What? You didn't want to cook in the dark? That's good. I knew you'd have some good ones. Angel. Surgery, surgery right. Please don't do surgery on me. In the dark. That's good. That's good. I told you there's some really br brilliant people. Yes, Carlos. Break dance. Break <laughs> yeah, because it'll give new meaning to break dance. That's good. What about pop and lock? Would you want to do that? Because he's like, I can pop and lock anywhere. I don't need no light. Get Oh, yeah, a tattoo, right? Like you spent all this time telling them what exactly the tattoo that you want, and then they just like, Start the lights go off and they're like, it's okay. I didn't need that light. I'm good. Chanel? Where yeah, 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 yeah. When I did a little search online, they said you don't want to put your blush on or any or mixing colors for makeup. You could have like I act like I know what I'm talking about, but yeah, I'm sure you don't want to mix the colors the right way. Watch a scary movie? You want to turn all the lights? Well, I do. I, I want to turn all the lights on and get out of there because I don't like scary movies. <laughs> Man. Choo-choo. All right, so I have no idea why Tyler just did that, but. Uh, bake? Oh, paint. Oh, okay, paint. That's good. Um, yeah, we could all think if we just spent the rest of the message time, well, all kinds of things read in the dark, right? So all kinds of things we wouldn't want to do in the dark, right? And I think that's kind of a cool analogy that there's things in life. We don't want to live in the dark. Amen? Can I get an amen? Um, so, yeah, let's go to John 1. I just love this. John 1, I love, guys, there's not a letter in the Bible that doesn't, have some significance. God can use it all. And I just love the story of when Jesus chose his disciples. There's something about that. There's something about him choosing his disciples and them responding. I mean, we can all relate, right? Because we're his disciples. We heard him. You know, I, I talk about when I found Jesus, but he found me. Come on, can I get a witness? Like, you, you can't be dead and separated from God without a covenant and just whoop, wake up one day and say, I love Jesus. I want to love Jesus. You know what I mean? He raises us up. Now, you know, he's the one who, who gives us life. And um, so I want to, that's, that's the context of this, por this portion in John. Um, John. Gospel of Juan. Juan 1. Juan 2, 3. Oh, there it is. Did I start in verse 45? All right. So Jesus already told Philip, follow me. And then Philip, check this out, right? This is like 2 Timothy where it says when Paul's talking to Timothy and um, to choose, you know, make disciples and there's all these generations there, which I won't get into, but it's 
pretty powerful. Like that's our, it's what, we're making disciples. It's what we do at our church. It's what we're do as, as we're, what we're called to do as a church, the universal church. Um, and uh, I love that Philip had just been called to be a disciple. And what does he do? He finds Nathaniel. And he said to him, we have found him. Oh, it's right there. That's cool. That way I don't have to turn my back on people. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Like this is huge news. We found the Messiah, Yahshua. All right, next verse. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I love this answer. Philip said to him, right, right, right. He, hey, he's just keeping it real. Right? I mean, come on. He's keeping it real. Like, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I kind of like that about Nathaniel. He don't want to be fake. It's kind of what we're talking about tonight. We don't want to be fake. Like if you, Lord, I, I heard somebody do a, a sozo debo the other day. It was really good. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. You know what I mean? Like, where am I at? Wherever I'm at, guess what? That's where I'm at. If I'm at if, I, if I'm here, but I think, or I project to somebody else that I'm somewhere else, what am I doing? I'm lying. I'm lying. Whoa, is there lying in the body of Christ? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. I love that too. We love that verse, right? Taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Man, he is not opposed to us. Like, you know what I mean? Go ahead and stick your fingers in my side. You know, look at these holes and, 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 and feel the body that's a risen, resurrected body, um, Thomas. But blessed are those who don't see and still believe. Jesus said, Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him. Everyone say saw. He saw Nathanael. And he said of him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Think about that. Think about that experience right now for Nathaniel. You have no, you're, you're, he's obviously a little bit of a skeptic. He doesn't know this Jesus. He's got, now he's got a little bit of, maybe you could call it peer pressure, like friends that are saying, you need to follow him. You need to do this. And the, maybe, who knows what his story is? Maybe he don't like to be controlled or told what to do. You know what I mean? He's got mama issues or something. I don't know. But then all of a sudden, the same one that they're telling him to follow looks at him. And he looks at him. I believe he looked into him. You know what I mean? Like, I believe he saw him. You know? And, and then, all of a sudden, he speaks life. Right? He speaks into him. An Israelite in whom there's no deceit. He's prophesying, but he's, but he, but he's, but he's, He's looking into his spirit, his soul. It's not, he's not trying to impress him with, hey, you know, uh, his authority or his, his uh, I am, you know, I'm a pretty big deal. Like, I'm Yashu. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the master. I created you, you know. So, therefore, I shall prove it to you by I shall tell you things about you that you didn't know I know and I'm going to impress you. That's not how we did it. He just humbly spoke and he saw him. You know what I mean? Deeper than just saw his body. He saw him. And I, I just love that. And, and I, think this, I think you can say the same thing about that story where, um, wait, let me finish this part. Nathaniel said to him, how do you know me? There you go. How do you know me? Mm, you know me. So what did I say? In the light, you will be seen and known. Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Come on, tell your neighbor he sees you. Come on, that's good. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the, look at his response. Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Oh my goodness. Gosh, if we want to turn people from, uh, including ourselves, from skeptics to having an encounter with God, we need to see and we need to know. And that starts by us being seen and by us being known. It's great evangelism. The gospel means so much more to me as I've walked in the light than the Roman road. And the Roman road of Romans 3.23. Have you ever thought about the Roman road? You know, for uh, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, for the wages of sin is death, 
But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All these verses all in Romans. That's what the Roman road is, right? And that lead to salvation. Hallelujah. Right? Amen. But read Romans 3. Romans 3 is all about, like, sin. Yeah, today. That's what's our chapter today. Romans 3. It's all about, like, the main character in Romans 3 is sin. God doesn't want sin to be the main character in our lives. He wants us to get it out, be known, get it in the light, because he knows when you bring something in the light, nothing of darkness can live. Nothing, it, it loses its power. Amen? Uh, so there's this, um, there's a couple encounters that a couple, I would, experiences that I had as a young Christian that I wanted to share, and they completely baffled me. And, I, and they make a lot more sense now as I'm a little bit, a little bit older, mature, I guess. Um, that is the first one, I was barely saved. I was maybe a year old in the Lord, and I was going to this awesome church in my hometown. And uh, I don't know, I'm just loving Jesus, and the church service ends, and all of a sudden they said, hey, Paul, like, members only, we're having a members only meeting after service. And I'm like, what do we just have? Like, we just have, what, you know what I mean? Like, what are we doing now? And so we, we, I go back in because it's all, and I, I'm just like brand new. I'm 18 years old. I just found Jesus. He found me. You know, all, I mean, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going where I'm told, and, and I'm in this service. And then the pastor begins to share, and he's got the pastor, his wife, and the music wor worship leader, and his wife. And uh, basically, real discreetly, gently starts talking about how you know, we were all way on vacation, and, um, uh, you know, there were some things that were said, um, you know, that shouldn't have been said. Um, basically, talking about gossip, you know what I mean? And, and, um, and, and that we've talked to people that have been involved, and if you have any more information about anything, feel free. If you have any questions, you know what I mean? And, and it's just got a tone to it. It's not a celebratory tone. Like, this is, this is a family meeting. You know what I mean? I don't know if you ever have family meetings in your family, but it's like, whoa, we dealing with something here. Like, oh, okay. And I'm just like, oh, I just love Jesus. You know what I mean? I just want to go eat lunch and love Jesus and tell people about him. And so next thing you know, they, um, you know, it was, really, it was really clear that this music minister and his wife were the ones who were spreading, you know what I mean? But it was done completely respectfully. And the next thing you know, the pastor gets down on his knees and takes the shoes and the socks of the music minister off his feet and takes a bowl of, wa of water and he begins to wash his feet. And I'm just like, huh? I'm like Scooby-Doo, right? Like, what's happening? And wash, washes his feet. It's a holy moment. It's the best way I could describe it. I then later on, um, then it was, and this, I guess this wasn't planned, but the worship leader does the same thing to the pastor. And, and then they, they had a time of prayer. They were dealing with something that needed to be dealt with in the family, but they did it God's way. And it was, it was like, it taught me something. Like it was humility. Years later, when I was in Bible college in Oklahoma, there was a revival in Smithton, Missouri. And a bunch of my buddies, we drove over to, it wasn't too far. And we waited in line, I mean, around the buildings, big old line in Missouri for to get into this church service. We get into this church service. It starts off like you would think, just everyone jumping up and down, fire falling, powerful, amazing. But by the end of the service, as there was just repentance and as there was the presence of God in a totally different way, it reminded me of that foot washing service years earlier. Had the same spirit of God. It was a spirit of humility. It was a spirit of grace, forgiveness, restoration, redemption. You know, it was a spirit of, it's the gospel. It was, the gospel showed up. Now, Another experience that I had was uh, several years later, I was still in that same, uh, I was still in Tulsa area going to Bible college. 
And, you know, when you're a Christian Christian and, like, you know, it's the weekend, you don't party, you go to another church. So I had, like, my second church, uh, you know, it was a Friday night church. It was a cool church, cool pastor and this and that. And uh, anyway, we, um, we, I showed up for this. This is, like, stadium seating. Like, this guy was real popular, um, and this, this pastor in this church and really good worship leaders and um, uh, just powerful in all kinds of really cool ways. And, I, and Anyway, um, I, I come in and I'm looking around like something's different. Everyone's kind of like sitting and everyone's kind of somber. And all of a sudden, they start to share how the pastor had a moral failure. And they start sharing about this. And I, again, you know what I mean? I'm like, What? You know, I just want to hear the Bible taught. I just want to, you know, worship God. And 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 again, it's just a few years after that. And so um, I'm still just like not knowing, you know, really what it's, I don't know. Anyway, I just, it was a, it was a holy moment again. But this time, um, they, the, the church um, elders uh, or the board, um, they, they, uh, they came and, and they, 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 just, they chose not to let the pastor speak for certain reasons. And, um, but they read a letter from him. And um, in the letter, he says this phrase, obviously, I failed to connect with my friends. And that baffled me. I thought he was going to say, I failed to connect with God. I failed to connect with, I I failed to fill in the blank, like read the Bible enough or, you know, pray in the spirit enough or whatever it happens to be. And I didn't get it, but he was, it's the same topic. All of these are related. Are we in the light? What I, what, this is how, this is one way. And again, I want, I do feel like there, God wanted this title. So please do your own praying church to find out, because I'm just a human trying to like deliver what I feel like the Lord wants us to hear, but also taking it for myself because it was, um, it was a, it was very serious, and and you know, and it's a very serious topic, to whether you're in the light or in darkness, right? Um, and um, and so, um, what was I going to say? What? Yeah, thanks, brother. Yeah, so yeah, I would say my definition of um, w- the way, well, something that I know. Um, helps me to helps me to know and feel confident that I um, that I'm in the light is that there is nothing in my life um, and when I say nothing I'm talking about the stuff that we don't like I don't like to talk about you know what I mean my bad attitude and, and I'm, let's go as deep as you you know let the hurts insecurities fears stuff that you know like what I said in my prayer skeleton like, skeletons in the closet right there is nothing that I, and as far as I know, that I believe could grow. Because you guys understand, you got you know James 1, where it talks about how first, you know, you got these desires, you're drawn away by your own desires, and then it gives birth to sin, and gives sin, sin gives birth to death, yeah. right? And, and it's always easier, it's always better when you deal with it in a small place. So if you think about anything that could grow to be like a moral failure or some, or just or really hurting somebody or whatever it happens to be, I, I can't think of anything that is like that in my life that somebody on this earth, not just God, going back to that we have fellowship with one another, doesn't know about. That's where I found so much freedom. You know, when I, being a youth pastor and being a minister at this church, I, I, I used to think I had to just, I, I, would ha- I didn't have friends, I mean, to be honest. Like, I didn't really have friends that I could talk to, especially like that, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, I, and, it, and the Bible talks about how there's rottenness in the bones when you, when you keep that in. And I feel the opposite of that. I feel, I feel lighter and freer. And, you know, when I'm able to share my... St- and then this is the funny thing that happens as I... Um, I'm able to share that, and I and I and I know I've talked about this a little bit, but but it's it's huge, and 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 I don't mean 
you know, if you have a practical application to this message, I'm not saying to just tell everything that you've ever done to just some random person, okay? Talk to Pastor Drew, talk to Pastor Tamara if you're a woman, and, and, and they'll, and I know that they do a great job. They're raising up elders, elder meetings. There's a, lot, a bunch of elders in this room. We have a lot of amazing ministers, more pastors have, have joined the ranks, and, and so we, this is a real, this is a training center of a church. And, and, but talk to them, because they will delegate delegate, or they might not, but they'll, they'll know who that safe person is, all right? Uh, but it, it, or it could, you know, could be something, but I'm just saying, you know, in your, in your zeal, you know, use wisdom. Bible talks about that. But, um, but yeah, it, it, uh, it, it's a pretty powerful thing. In fact, um, yeah, can we get that John Lynch quote? John Lynch is the author of the book, The Cure, and uh, he's got a lot of cool quotes, um, cool brother. And uh, he said, what if it was less important that any, anything ever gets fixed, then nothing has to be hidden? What if it was less important that anything ever gets fixed, then nothing has to be hidden? And I was so, I've always, I've, I, I've spent so many years trying to either fix myself or honestly fix other people. Because I always looked at God as like, I have to be fixed for him to love me. You guys, you, a couple times ago, it's been a little while, but I talked about that one of my, you know, things that I had to work through was, a, was something I learned, an insecurity or a belief system that I was only loved if I performed well, right? And I had to get past that because God loves me, right? God loves you, period, and, and another thing that John Lynch said was, he said, if, um, you know what, let me pull it up. Um, they don't have this back there, but no one told me that when I wear a mask, only my mask receives love. Come on, somebody. That, that one, I wasn't planning on sharing that one, but the Holy Spirit just would not let that leave my head. What if no one ever told me that when I wear a mask, only the mask receives love? We can't, there's things in our lives we cannot live without. And it's not just Maslow's, you know, you know, we, we need more than food and water. You know, and Maslow's actually talks about a lot of stuff. But, but um, we, you know, we, we need an identity. God, do you, do, you, do you know the people struggling with identity? Like today I got a package, you know, at my doorstep. And this person, I just feel, felt it. They have no idea who they are. I don't. It's not a judgment. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm. My heart's broken. Like, do they have anybody in their life who is in the light enough and confident in themselves? Because the fear of the Lord brings confidence. Yes. It brings confidence in us when I when we're in the dark. There's no confidence. When I'm loving my sin and I don't want to be known, I don't want to bring it to the light, and I just want my you know my little sucker, and I'm you know, sucking on it, and I don't really want to let it go, you know, lightness with the blanket. There's no confidence in that. It feels good in the moment in the dark. There's pleasure in sin, but there's also a lot of deceitfulness. And all of a sudden, um, but there's confidence when, and, and notice, I am not, I am far from perfect. I'm not talking about, that's, that's not what I'm saying. But, I, but I, I, I have places where I don't have to hide. I mean, I, I don't have to hide. Uh, and, and therefore, I can know you better. You know, is there somebody who feels like they can't, they don't have to hide? So that young lady that, I, that was delivering packages, a young person, I don't know what gender, but like, um, you know, do they have anybody in their life that's speaking like Jesus did to Nathaniel? That's God's heart. That's what he wants to do. That's what people are looking for. They're looking for somebody that we need to be, that's a need, to be seen, to be known, to have purpose. These are basic human needs, right? And don't you love our kids' ministry? You know what I mean? Like, I just, I look at the kids at our church, and I just see how they interact with each other, and, and I see how they're parented, and, and I see how they're, you know, they're just known, you know what I mean? And, and, and that, anyway, I just thought of that, but, but it's pretty, but it, we have a healthy kids' ministry, and, and there's, that's where the foundation's laid. Well, what if the foundation's 
not laid of, of those basic human needs that a lot of times parents, they just, and it's, I'm not here to bash on parents or bash on any, or even society, just we, we live in a fallen world. And, and, and I just can't help but wonder, you know, when the Bible talks about, you know, that, he's, that the whole earth groans for the manifestation of the sons of God, if, I think I'd be amiss if I didn't include this in there. Not just people who can raise the dead and walk and, and operate in all nine gifts of the spirit. You know, I remember this one story sticks out. You know, we were over there. We had a we had somebody um, speaking. Uh, Pastor Joel Pryor remembers this. Um, and uh, th- there was a, there were a lot of prophetic words that were being given out um, to the youth. And there was this young young lady who um, basically came there. Um, I knew her from school, et cetera. So she was brand new, and. Um, all of a sudden, I mean, this, they they speak prophetically to her, like read her mail, like, you know, Jesus did to Nathaniel in a way on on the prophetic side, but she got scared. How did he know that? Like, what's going on? And, and, and it just blew her mind and it blew fear up in a big way in her mind. And, And it really, and it kind of discouraged me. I'm like, Lord, that's what we want to do, isn't it? Isn't that how revival comes? Isn't that how the, the loss come in? Because the prophetic and the power of God. But there's a lot more than just, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, are you comfortable? Are you validated and known as you are? If you can't, res- you know what I mean? Are you love? Do you belong? There's so many people that want to, there's just, we just want to belong. And I, and there's all kinds of things that we can belong to. And it doesn't, you know, but I, I love what, um, I think it's Philippians 1, 6, that we are, or Ephesians 1, 6, we are accepted in the beloved. That accepting that God gives us is, is pretty powerful. Anyway, um, that is, that's what I want. That's what I know has really helped my life. Being known, uh, being in the light, having people around me that, you know, what I was going to say earlier was there's something powerful that I experienced when I would, when I first started telling something that was not flattering about myself especially with that belief system, like I have to do well to be loved. And literally in my brain, this is a, neurologically this is true, I expect, I was just ready for them to judge me. I was ready to be like, oh my God, and you're you're a pastor? You're you're, you're ordained as a minister? I expected that. That's what what was real in my body and in my brain. And, um, and they just listened, and they just, with love, non-judgment. And um, neurologically, they've done research that shows that that does, it changes your brain when we are in a, a, a non-judgmental context, and we're able to, you know, I, I should have put this in there, um, James, confess your faults one to another, and pray for each other that you may be healed. Like, that's awesome. That's powerful. Do you have somebody, there's a practical application, do you have somebody that you can be yourself with and pray for? Even, even to start the day, well, however it works out, and just something quick, something something real, you know what I mean? Grill some cast iron steaks, you know what I mean? Or whatever it happens to be if you're a man, or, you know, make a doily if you're a woman, or a sconce, you know, Pastor Tamara's sconce class coming soon. Just kidding, Pastor Tamara, I did not just volunteer you for that. Amen. All right, uh, that's all I have. I want to pray, though. I felt like the Holy Spirit wants to, he is, I can feel that he's doing a work. Um, and um, let's pray to into that. Can we do that? Um, Father, I just thank you so much for the uh, this truth, powerful truth, that you dwell in unapproachable light. Um, you are amazing. But you also said, you know, we didn't read this, but Ephesians says we are light in the Lord. You made us your light. We look like you. 
But Father, we can get caught up into darkness. We can act like we need to perform. All, every one of us has some kind of a story, some, some kind of a belief system that's not exactly what you want us to have. And, and, and we want to change something about us and we're not able to. Or there's something about us that we don't like. Or a number of all of these and I'm just praying right now um, for each one of us. I don't even want to do an altar call, but, but each, one, each person, you guys can respond in your own way. Listen to the Holy Spirit, and I pray that there would be, that people would experience, that they'd be able to experience what, um, what I've experienced and even more of just being able to be known, being able to be seen, being validated. That is your gospel. We know John 3, 16, and it's a powerful truth. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. In the next verse, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Lord, I pray that each one of us would carry that, would receive that non-judging, full of grace and truth, love of God, love of the Father, the validating love of the Father, the freeing love of the one who has known us and knit us in our mother's womb. Mm, I pray that over each one of us. Even when we look at verses like judgment comes first to the house of God, this is where that starts. I can judge myself more correctly because I know myself better. I am loved and, and I'm validated. I can be myself. Therefore, I can judge the things that I don't like about my behavior more easily. I can, and the way I see, I think that God sees me, that's the way I'm going to see other people. The way... That was one of my, that was something that came across a couple weeks ago. Another quote um, that I heard, and I wish I could give credit to the person, um, but it's escaping me, but it, that um, the way we believe God sees us, that's the way we will see other people. So I saw God as he needed me to perform, he needed me to do, check all the boxes and be basically perfect. And so how did I treat other people? Well, I'm going to love you more if you are, if you do all these things. That's, that's just how it happens. That's what's happening with parents. That's what happens with leaders. That's what happens. I mean, I, that's what happens with pastors. No one's exempt from this except for Jesus himself. He's the only one who has perfect, unconditional love. Father, would you just allow us to encounter and receive the unconditional love of God? Do we even know what that's like? Do we even really know what that's like? Because the human economy is that I will love you if. God, what if the church had God's economy? And, and I... We just want more of it. I don't, I, I'm not church bashing. I know the church is beautiful, but I know you're doing something huge, Lord. You're the father from whom all fatherhood gets its title and derives its name. I, just lift up your hands right now and receive him. Say, God, be my father. Be my father. I will hold nothing from you just talk to him right now about how you want to be more known more seen how you believe that his gospel is so much more than sin having being the main character jesus we want you to be the main character in our gospel how you come into my weak places how you come into my beliefs how you come into on a deep place when i might have a real 
vulnerable moment or insecurity is just filling me and I don't know what to do and I feel so powerless over something, Jesus, that's when you come in and you can use other people too, but you're the, you're the author of every good thing. That's when you come in and you do some wondrous things. That's all you know how to do, Jesus, is wondrous things. We love you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Wow, it reminds me of, remember, 730 prayer that we used to do? And you used to rock that, and I would pray. Hallelujah. Come on, get the drums, Tyler. Let's do this. Oh, anyway, awesome. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Jesus, Jesus, can you sing? Be in the light. As he, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that's that's like so '90s, but it is so eternal. Yeah, brother. You want to say something? Okay, Amen. Joaquin, what was that thing that you said? That I, I, you know what? You're on a camera. Yeah, come up and finish up what God did for you as soon as you, I, pretty soon when you came to Sozo, I think, or to the church, right? Before you leave, let's pray for Pastor Paul. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for Pastor Paul, his leadership, and above all else, his obedience to you, Father. Just his willingness to be more like you every day, Father. Oh my goodness. I feel like the Lord wants to tell you, not in a prideful way, but like in a submissive kind of way that because you submitted to me, because you allowed me to use you, there's so many more young people at this church because of you, because of your obedience to Jesus and to God and the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. And thank you, Lord, that he is going to continue to grow in you and the things of you, Father God, that th this is just the tip of the iceberg. God has such a great destiny for you, Pastor Paul. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you. Um, so the story that Pastor Paul wanted me to share is what kind of how Jesus just confronted me the second I walked into this camp on this campus. Um, I came late to the service because I was actually finishing up a round of chemotherapy including the recovery of my immune system. They had to wait till my white cell count was at a certain point to where I wasn't uh, immunocompromised. And if, if, if they were to let me out before that point, there would be a whole mess of complications that would uh, proceed after that. And so they waited till my white cell count was at this certain point. And then um, I remembered somebody had invited me to this church and I was like, what day was that? I was like, it's Wednesday. What day is it? It's, it's, it's Wednesday. I was in the hospital for so long, I forgot like what what day, what time of, of the day it was. What, yeah, what year it was. <laughs> Came out of the building with like a giant white beard. Where am I? So I'm on my way home and it's like, it's six, like 15 when I leave the hospital. I get home, I rinse off, get dressed, and I get here, so I'm super late. I walk in and as I'm like coming around the corner to like scoot, like do the awkward, like, oh, excuse me, excuse me, sorry, excuse me. As I'm about to start that, so it's already really awkward. I think it might have been Tony. Somebody in the room came and they're like, hey, did you just show up in a, in a, in a black truck? I was like, yeah, they're like, you left your headlight, headlights on. And I was like, oh, okay. And if I'm not mistaken, I kind of feel like maybe I should just get it and leave. This is so awkward. Like, I haven't been to church. I haven't decided to go to my own church most likely ever. And now I'm here. I'm late. They just, I, I, I couldn't even sit down right. And now I have to walk back to the car. And so I just turn off the lights. I turn, I came back inside. So fi I finally get into my seat. I sit down. I like wipe my pants off, kind of like do like the whole like readjustment. And then I look up and the first words out of Pastor Paul's mouth was, if you're struggling with something, keep struggling. And it hit me like a ton of bricks because he wasn't looking at me, but I was like, who, who is this guy? Did somebody tell him I was coming? Because it was for everybody in the room. Amen. But like, 
how much more was it for me? It was so pointed that it got through my prideful, it got through my pride, it got through my agnosticism, it got through the facade, it got through the every mask I've ever worn and hit me because if I wasn't struggling with what I was struggling with, which is cancer, I would have, would have lost myself. So it was in that moment that I'd finally come to the end of myself. I had to face my own mortality that I realized there's something to this church thing. There's something to this Jesus thing. There is something to Christianity and the love of God. I didn't know it at the time, but it was I was being confronted with love. I was being confronted with the love of a father who had missed his son. And I wasn't going to let him off the chain, no willy-nilly. It was a confrontation of, of true love. Not, not the kind of love that says like, oh, okay, go, go for it. Go. Like, like, you know how, how if you do something wrong and, and a parent is too lenient, they're like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, I'll, I'll fix it. And, and, and there's no accountability. There's no, like, there's no repercussions. I felt accountability. And I felt almost like a, I felt, I felt a correction, but also felt such a warm hug all at the same time. And I just realized it's just right now, that was like the beginning of my walk out of darkness. Like Pastor Paul was saying, we're not meant to live in the darkness. We're not meant to hide our lamp. We're meant to be a light upon a hill. And that in that moment, that was my moment of, of, of a calling out of darkness. That was the light shining onto me. I know exactly what it is. Pastor Paul didn't prepare, didn't tell me that I was going to come up here, so this was not prepared. I know exactly what it was. It was me living in the darkness, as, 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 as the Holy Spirit spoke that through Pastor Paul into me. That was God's light shining onto my darkness. That was the calling that hit my heart. That was in that moment that my heart of flesh started, my heart of stone started to turn into a heart of flesh that God wanted to give me. So I know he's calling all of us right now. I mean, there's, there's, there's no one perfect in this room, so, so everybody in this room watching online and watching a rerun on Facebook Live or YouTube, everybody that is not Jesus Christ, obviously, has a little bit of darkness that God is shining on, shining his light onto right now. But no matter what it is, depression, anxiety, greed, Maybe you haven't been living as holy as you used to. Maybe you haven't been living as righteous as you used to, as you, as you know you should be. And God wants to confront you and confront your darkness and shine his light unto that the same way he did unto me. Where you feel like taken back, you feel the correction, and it doesn't feel perfect. It doesn't feel warm and cozy, but you still feel loved. The same way when a father or a mother looks at you and they say, I'm just, I'm just disappointed. Yeah, that, that, was, that was like the worst thing of, like, my, my parent could say to me. They would yell at me. They would, I've, my mom could have called me stupid for like all I cared, but the moment she like did the, <sighs> my heart sank, because I know what the next words are going to be. I'm disappointed. And I, I just wanted to make things better. I wanted to make things right. And God, more or less, not exactly, he's not saying he's disappointed, but he's saying, I can't wait for you to do better. God cannot wait to see who, oh my goodness. God is so ready for your calling. Are we ready to receive our calling, church? The phone is ringing louder than it ever has been before. 2020 was a wake-up call. It was, it was a shaking of our normal. I heard a really good pastor talk about how, how God wants to, how our normal is disrupted. And, and people are coming up to this pastor over and over every Sunday saying, I can't wait for things to get back to normal, pastor. More or less, yes, but I think what God was saying and the, and the point of that pastor, what he was saying is maybe God's calling us out to a new normal. Maybe our, maybe our darkness is being confronted in such a way that we don't want to be normal anymore. You ever notice, you ever notice people, people, people will bash you for being extra. Man, oh, you're so extra, you're so loud, you're so this. Do you want to be natural or do you want to be supernatural? Do you want to be normal or do you want to be above normal? 
The world will tell you to be average and, and, to, and to stay in your place. It's not what your calling is. It's not what our calling is as a church. We're not meant to be normal. We're, we're, meant, we're meant to be shaken up and, and, and to be stirred up and to go out and fire other people up. Like it says on the wall, make disciples. You can't make disciples if you're still in the boat. I'll close with this. We give Peter a lot of junk for falling in the water. He was the only one that got out of the boat. You had a bunch of other people who were disciples and they were still in the boat. Imagine if somebody would have followed him. He would have been encouraged. He might have made it to Jesus if somebody followed him. You can't live in darkness and walk on water. I'm going to pray us out if Pastor Paul doesn't have anything else. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for just your light, your word, your correction, your conviction, and your love. You cannot separate God's love from his conviction. He convicts those who he loves. He convicts those who he calls children. So if you call yourself a child of God, if you call yourself a Christian but haven't experienced it's a conviction in a long time, it's a wake-up call. It's the Holy Spirit turning the light on in the room that you didn't even realize was dark. Jesus, we thank you that you are the light. You are the light that comes into all of our hearts changes us from the inside out. You know you've had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and with God and Jesus when you know you're not the same. Jesus, 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 you are just so real. God, I pray for everybody watching this stream that they are being called out in the most loving way, that they are being called up God loves you right now. He loves you with all of your junk. He loves you. But he loves you too much to leave you in the junk. But he cannot forcefully pull you out. That was the beauty of free choice. So dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are quickening all of our hearts, Father, to make the free choice to be yours, to call you Lord, to give you control, to allow you to correct us, to allow you to change us. If we look the same as we did last month, we're doing something wrong. Dear Heavenly Father, you are calling your church to higher places, from faith to faith and glory to glory. Dear Heavenly Father, help us be more like Peter and get out of the boat. But help us learn from Peter's mistake when he looked at the wind and he fell. Let us be disciples that get out of the boat and make it to you. That was your will, is that Peter made it to you. Your will is that those people who are lost make it to you. Jesus, you are so good. Thank you, Father God, for tonight. Thank you that you are a loving, kind God you're calling somebody that's that's been in the dark for a long time you're calling them out right now they are feeling it somebody in this room is, is is feeling a call to the light a call to a greater destiny maybe they've gotten complacent maybe we've gotten comfortable god help us be uncomfortable help us realize that we have been not running to you like we should have been and Lord, I thank you that the prayer of the righteous man availeth much, Father God, that I'm not righteous because of what I've done, but because of what your son did on the cross. So as my prayer in Jesus' righteousness availeth much, that lives are being changed right now, that DNA is being rearranged right now, and we are walking in our calling. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Anything, Pastor Paul? Awesome. Uh, hang out with us every 10 a.m. Pastor Drew gives an amazing devotional Monday through Friday, 10.
10 a.m. Uh, Monday through Friday at 3 p.m., one of the Sozo leaders gives an amazing devotional. That one's on uh, Sozo Instagram. So if you don't have an Instagram, get with somebody that's below 20. Wow. Pastor Drew always says, Gets below, get below with somebody that's 25. I just realize I'm not below 25 anymore. <laughs> get with somebody younger than you. Have them help you sign into Instagram. Uh, do what you got to do because those Sozo devotionals are amazing. Be here on Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. in person. Bring a friend, a mask, your sunglasses, and your smile because smiling is our favorite here at Hope Community. God is doing something amazing in this church. He's doing something amazing in each individual as well. You guys have a blessed night. Thank you for joining us. In Jesus' name, you guys are dismissed. <laughs> Amen. Just crazy.